Well, everybody knows there's a bubbling voice now, so that's for sure. And it's a beautiful voice, that one. One of unity, one of togetherness, one of peace, one of love, you know. That's the way forward. Oga, Oga! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Um, uh, you know, just as I was saying to you earlier, I thought it was important that I s capture your your story, how you've got to where you are right now. You know, and uh, I think it's important not only for us, for us, but then I think for people that are younger than us and those that will come after us. So, um, how are you doing? How are you doing? How have you been? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I love doing stuff like this. So honestly, it's an honor, absolute honor. But otherwise, I'm good. I'm very busy, which is also a huge blessing in the world that we live in now. So yeah, I'm good. I'm all good. Super, super. And um, of course, I know what you do, but for everyone listening that might not, I know, of course, there's a lot of stuff that you do, you know what I mean? But you have, there's the there's, the, <laughs> there's done. So everyone listening, like, maybe introduce yourself, what you get up to and, and what it is that you do. Cool. So my name is Michelle Natterville. People, mm. I think, maybe know me more from TikTok, Instagram. Um, <laughs> started off as a a dancer then I opened a dance studio called Dance Avenue which has been open I think since 2014 now so that's mm -hmm. I think eight years so yeah that's mm -hmm. going amazing well I work with some really incredible people mm -hmm. and yeah so from there obviously COVID hit and I realized I, I couldn't teach dancing because it was mm. bad, social distancing mm. so then I, I kind of looked into what my other passions were to try and obviously make a living because it was all a nightmare for us as we mm. all know um, and then I realized that like video editing and trick editing was something that I had always done myself or whether it was for the studio, just making like promo videos for shows or whatever. So I decided like, no, this is my calling. So let me start by just trying to make people happy and try and make people smile and make mm. myself ridiculous. But, <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, that's basically what I do. So I'm a videographer, I do social media marketing and I have a mm. dance studio and I teach and choreograph and produce shows. Yeah. that's that's cool it's almost it's funny how like sometimes like tough things like pandemic was hard for like everybody in some way shape or form but it's cool that you kind of came out of it with like not that you didn't have the skill already but it just gave you a whole new different avenue you know what i mean absolutely absolutely i think like for a lot of people COVID was really terrible but i think for me i have to count my blessings because it worked out for me it's like pushed me to mm. branch out to better myself in different ways so i'm really i'm really grateful because to be honest if it wasn't for COVID, i wouldn't have had like the effort i guess it sounds terrible mm. but like if mm. action like you said like make my cogs in my head work and be like okay michelle what's plan b mm. you can't be dancing you know what i mean so now mm. I'm running two careers i've actually in a better position than i was before COVID. so i think i'm like one of the lucky ones that can say mm. that it actually as a person and as a as a career in general mm. that's really cool I think like I was, I was just thinking about this earlier. I think we're literally living in the age of uh, like content is changing everything or the age of decentralization whereby before you had to, you know, maybe if you didn't have a job, people, a lot of people are getting laid off, but even the one, the biggest TikTok in the world, I, th I think I forget where he's from. I think he's from, from the French guy. He's yeah. simply la laid off during COVID. You know the story, right? I'm not sure. If... The guy that does. Yeah, yeah, the guy that does the. <laughs> <laughs> Or or something I'll be, like yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was reading something about how, like, he was during COVID, he got laid off, and he was like, geez, but what am I going to do? And now it's like, you now know, he's, he's, a he's, he's of gone. This. He's gone <laughs> without opening his mouth. It's insane. Not even. He doesn't ever, okay, I don't know if I've ever heard, of him. he doesn't speak. And he's just, I think he now is either number mm. one or three on the most followed people on TikTok. Like, that's hundreds of millions of people that you mm. have like reach to like that's mind-blowing like absolutely mind-blowing let's do some so okay, I'm, I'm gonna get into how you're going to be the dancer but i think i think it's important to touch on tiktok now because or just con like instagram tiktok so people just think of them as cool things to post you know yeah. photos or just to have a bit of a dance but they're actually very powerful platforms in terms of like i was saying to you when we grew up we didn't really like before you had zbc or dstv yeah. and that's the only place you go to watch stuff but now you have all of these various things and whoever likes you will gravitate towards what it is that you're 
doing? So how has that worked in your favor, like in terms of sponsorships and things of that nature? So I think I've been lucky because it's mm. very new in Zim. So the, the, the mm. pool of people that do the same sort of thing that I do is very small. Whereas let's say if you go to the States or if you go to mm. Africa or something like that, like you, you get lost in like in millions mm. of people. Like everyone's doing the same thing but I feel like I kind of with my transitions and using our more local music and mm. I think I kind of picked up on something that that no one else was doing so for me mm. that benefited me well because that's kind of become what like my niche and everyone when they think of oh we want to do this with clothing I'm like the first person mm. that come, comes to mind mm. so for mm. that for my personal brand that's obviously worked amazingly and in mm. terms of stuff I guess I'm everyone's asked everyone always asks me like oh does Instagram pay or does TikTok pay you and, no, the answer is no. I'm not actually very good at using this platform. I'm just going to make videos and put them on. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so maybe I'm just missing out on millions of dollars. <laughs> I hope I am. Um, but like, so mm. companies come to me and they say like, okay, so we want to showcase this. And then mm. I send a red card and that's how it kind of works. So for me, that's how it's turned from just doing videos, turning it into a career that's like, that I get paid to do that stuff. So that I'm not getting paid by the platform as such, but I'm getting paid by um, like corporates or paid by like individuals mm. just to market their companies for them. And then obviously because of my reach, it's easier for me to help get them what they're looking for. Mm. Do you do any like like paid ads? So for example, I used to work for a company whereby they would would create like, we had a Facebook and Instagram and then we'd do all the, what they call like A-B testing. We had, basically, you create content and you put money behind it and then you test it. Do you guys do any of that or is it all, has it been all organic? Absolutely organic. I've never Jeez. paid for an ad in my life. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's but wild. That's wild. I think, I think it's worked in my favor because I, you know that algorithm, like if they know that you're mm. going to pay, Mm. push you as much so i think it's a little bit of a touch and go because a lot of people if they pay they get great numbers obviously but if they don't then they don't mm. get any numbers at all so for mm. me i think i've built a consistent algorithm that if it sees myself and people like it it helps mm. it helps boost me rather than paying them because they know clearly they know i'm not going to pay them because i never mm. have mm. i don't know if that's, should... something, that's a more theory mm. you're right i was actually i was speaking to someone earlier but like how is King Kandora, who's a comedian, he was talking about how you never want to go viral too quickly. Like, it's very dangerous mm -hmm. to go viral too quickly. He's like, it's better to take the stairs and take the elevator because you want to build your following very slowly. At least you have, and you have a fan base that loves your content already on a base level. And if you want to then turn on the taps, that's cool. But at least if, even if you drop, you still have the core audience that will always support you. Because if you think about it, right? So, if you're not constant with what you post or whatever, and then you just get this one massive hit, yes, it's mm. always amazing. There's always mm. a huge benefit to having a viral video. There's always mm. going to be a benefit. Mm. But if you don't constantly be able to, with, to withhold that, then it's mm. really hard for those people to continue following. So for example, if you do something and then let's say you get, you get an extra on Instagram or TikTok, or you get, mm. let's say on TikTok, let's call it, you get 10,000 followers, right? Mm -hmm. When those people follow you, they're like, gosh, this is so cool. I love her content. But then your next video comes up Oh, that's not really <laughs> what I'm looking for. Unfollowed. <laughs> well, just as quickly as you can get followed, they're like, drops. Nah, not what I was hoping for. Unfollowed. It's nothing to them. And then we're all there, like heartbroken. <laughs> ah, yeah. And then, of course, as a, you know, and you're a human being. So naturally, you'd be like, oh, is it me? Did I do something? People don't like how I look. Right, 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 right. But it's not you. It's just the way in which you went about it. Well, um, yeah. to take it back, of this, course, like this. this say again. Say again. You have to be tough in this industry. Not everyone's going to like what you do. Yeah, but that's, I, I look at it more like, um, how can I say? It's really, I almost sound very woo, -woo. but it's like, like, a, like, a, like a radio has like a frequency, like you have mm -hmm. ZFM stereo will have tune in or whatever, 98 point example. Mm -hmm. They have a different frequency that not everyone tunes into ZFM. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So not everyone will tune in, tune into to Michelle or tune into Doom, and that's okay. But those who tune in will be happy to do it because there's a frequency I put out that people are attracted to. So I try not to get too like emotionally um, in my feelings. If you know, if that would be ever typical, I'll be like, well, maybe don't, and that's okay. Um, yeah. But na but naturally, as a human being, that you know, that could affect you. Of course. Of course, um, of course. But what I was saying was that obviously came from how you got to where you are now. Came from somewhere. Um, so in terms of dancing, how does that even, I mean, we're all born with the ability to dance, but 
when did you start dancing like you know in zim tell us a bit, a bit about that so i i started dancing from when i was three i used to do dancing and gymnastics um mm. my parents owned a gym and they were very involved in zimbabwe gymnastics they were both coaches so obviously it was what they mm. did so i completely gravitated to that and i was a uh, zimbabwe like rhythmic gymnast it wasn't really mm. my favorite thing in the world but i did because <laughs> Was the paint at the gym? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Um, so I started with that. I started with dancing at a very young age. So mm -hmm. from yeah, I think three or four I started, and then I did the, the classics. I did ballet. I did tap. I did jazz. I did um, acrobatics. The gymnastics. Where did, where did you go? Where did you? What was? What was the lady? What was the name Mitzi? 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 What, what, what was the lady? So, no, I never actually. So I know Mitzi very well. We've you know Mitzi, a lot of, right? Yeah. Mitzi Brothers, and I just I, I remember that name like yeah, yeah. my sister used to go there. Oh, <laughs> um, so I used I danced with a lady called June Clutey, who mm -hmm. she's still teaching now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I danced with her and I did all of my exams and all that stuff through her. And mm -hmm. then I kind of no one in Zim that I knew of, obviously, um, was doing like hip hop, and I had such interest in that and like break dancing. Mm -hmm. There was this girl, there was no white mm -hmm. girls that were doing that. Yes. None, right. So then I was like, why can't I? Why can I watch step up? I'm like, I can do that. Then you were like, <laughs> Matt's home and trying to learn. Do yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> so I just used to, I was obsessed with hip hop music. Obviously, everyone was like, yes. This right. Is um, and I was like, because a lot, not, not, not a lot of women, not a lot of white and women. Well, that, and now, yeah, but then not really. It wasn't like, At the time, none. right. right. Literally, Michelle. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> then I um I danced I think at the cricket. Do you remember they did like the T Twenty crickets and stuff? Mm, mm -hmm, and then they had mm -hmm. dancers. I was one of the dancers there, and then I was mm -hmm. invited to join a group called Zena. And mm. Zena was a bunch of incredible guys dancing. And they asked me to join it, and we went and danced at the um, Twenty Twenty World Cup. We were actually dancing at the Cape Town Conference Convention Center. Convention Center, right, so right, right. right. Mm. First, like experience of the real hip hop, and they were like flipping me and they were doing the, the whole thing, thing. I was, like, right? The only <laughs> and I was there with doing my work like 700 because I didn't have many tricks, but that was one of my cool ones, you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> so, kind of how I got into the, the hip hop thing, and then a few years after that, I stopped with them, and then I met up with um, I don't know, at actually a national ballet audition, I was holding an audition with national ballet, and we what we needed some guys desperately. Um, so we auditioned them and then I met up there with these guys and they were just incredible. And then they were like, hey, Michelle, do you want to join our crew called um, Eight Counts, Eight Count Crew? And I was like, you know, Michelle's like the yes girl. Oh so I'm like, my God. <laughs> so like two weeks later, they're like, oh, by the way, we have a competition in two weeks. And I'm like, what the hell? Oh, like, okay, my goodness. Go. So, and yeah, I, mean, I danced with, with them for, I think we did like a load of shows together. We did like Haifa performances together. Like we had our own show at Haifa. And actually with Airborne Masangamai, we're still dancing. We're still dance partners. We're still working mm. together. After. Like since then, that was in 2012. So it's 10 years since I've been like with him and doing all of our stuff. And so, yeah, it's been amazing. Wild. So that's basically my growth in the dance. Journey. Have you watched that movie called, I don't know, I was like, wow, this sounds like, so you're Save the Lost Dance. I don't know if you've watched this. There's a movie called Save the Lost Dance. If I yeah. think that's the one. Where it's yes. like a girl's at doing she's at ballet school in New York, but she sneaks away to do like, <laughs> like urban. <laughs> that's insane. Is that the one? With, like step up. Her name's Julia Styles, I think. Yes. And yes. you can see like when the camera's on her, she's like. And, really and then, then she's like. <laughs> and then the camera's behind her, she's like this professional dancer and stuff. Oh lord, even I think I could edit better than that. Goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> standard dance movie every dance movie is <laughs> every dance movie. but I, I find it i find it funny because they're always like the same parallels where it's like i don't know where it came from but it seems like the world wanted white women to only be a particular i don't know what what that's about like to dance a particular way i don't know where that comes from yeah mm. and then you're like no well actually girls can <laughs> do hip-hop and hip-hop is great and also it must have been really i mean now of course the jig is up i mean i'm a huge hip-hop fan and i feel like Hip hop runs the world now. It's like it's the biggest genre of music. But back then, it was not everyone could see that. You know what I mean? So where would you where would you go? Would you go on like MTV, you know, channel? What was your medium to like to watch the movies? Like, I wasn't I wasn't the cool girl. You know what I mean? Like mm. I wasn't the 
one who would sit and watch TV because I was always out. I was always at dancing. I was always doing that stuff. So for me, like, I remember watching things like TRL or whatever, but like, you know, like the classic, like, can you get any more? I used to watch it. I used to watch it every day. I used to watch it every day. Yeah. That was kind of the yeah, that I watched. Yeah. Then my, yeah. It was, I think it was mm. after, oh, I completely, I never remember the name of this movie. Not Stomp the Yard. Um, there was another not, hip not, hop. Not, not Step Up. There was Stomp you the Yard. Got you got served. Oh, you got served. Big movie. That, Huge that, movie. That movie <laughs> changed my life. That's when I was like, no, this is what I'm going to do. Absolutely what I'm going to do. Wait, so you said you saw you got served, but you said, this is it. This, I want to do I, that. I can do that trick. Watch. Yes, Michelle, do little thing. So that's, that was the movie for me. That was the one. So, so that's why uh, stories, are, stories are very powerful. Movies are very, very powerful. They can literally yeah, change people. Um, I promise you, you that can watch the them. That was first dance movie, and then the rest, they kind of went downhill from there. Some of them are. <laughs> Yeah, I feel yeah. like they've been recycling Step Up movies. Step Up 2 yeah. was great. Step Up 2 yeah. with like Channing Tatum, big movie. Uh, um, so it's one thing to, of course, be like coming up in the traditional mode where you're kind of doing gym, like gym, ballet, g- gymnastics, rhythmic gymnastics, all of these things. But then to say, okay, cool. Um, I want to do this hip hop thing. And no one's, re- I mean, not, it's, not, it's not really a, there's a small collective in Harare at, at best. How did you like do your training? You said was that through that group that you're in, Zina. Like, where would you go and train? Who was like your community? You know. So we wouldn't. I, I wouldn't say we trained as in like we didn't go out of the country or anything like this. We were all yeah. completely self-taught. We compete. So mm, mm. When like I don't know where they used to train beforehand, but my parents owned Rolf Valley Gym. Mm. So we would use that gymnastics floor there where I'd like grown up doing gym. Mm, like I'd mm. stay in my gym, like after hours, do you mind if we go? So we would go like, if the gym closed at, let's say seven, we would probably mm. some, sometimes go and train from like seven at night until 10 and like, like three hours from seven till 10 in the evening, you know, just to get mm. our things. Because they told me like, after I joined them, it was like five weeks and then we were going to the World Cup. They'd like gotten us offer, obviously before I was involved. Mm. So for us, it was like, we had every single day i mean if we watched us now it'd probably be absolutely horrendous like, <laughs> that's what you knew that's where you were right. yeah i still like at the time it was 2010 we were dope well we thought we were um but yeah so we used to train we used to train at my parents gym after hours and stuff and then like so my parents live really close to the gym we like 500 mm. meters so these mm. guys all from like um, more of the high density suburbs and stuff so they would actually like sleep in the foam pit like or on the, yeah. on the so they'd, yeah. you know, we'd just crash there and yes. so that's basically how how our lives went like in order for us to do that we had no other option than like a seven to ten rehearsal or whatever we we definitely pulled a couple of all-nighters close to the event like where we would train from like seven at night until like six in the morning and just go 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 just go. like and I was like 20 years old and I'm like half dying I've just done like I was studying to be a dance teacher and doing all of that and then have to go and teach dancing all day and then go for an all-night rehearsal and see I'm mm. just crazy times crazy. <laughs> but I would never change it. Like, I mean I would not do it now absolutely of course not. like you can't get Michelle to wake up in the morning most days <laughs> yeah I- um, <laughs> like I'm experience that you know that's incredible like I know, and, and I can. I've been to Rothwell. I've been in that pit on many occasions. I, I think back, oh, saying no. like, "Geez," um, but that's all for the love of dance and, and expression, you know. You know, as and I can imagine, it's the guy coming from high density, from the high density areas to kind of want to train. There must have been so special. At least the opportunity to train and, and have a space for that. Um, so for you to then say, "Okay, I think I want to learn how to teach this." How did you? Where did you go? And how did you go about what was the thinking so I've, process I've, towards i've never actually left them so that's that's mm-hmm. my claim to fame. i've never i've done this all everything i've done has been through them. It's so local. It's my, lovely so my my teacher june clutey i did all of my dance teachers training with her so my acrobatics my um modern dance and like mm-hmm. tap dance i did those qualifications through her like takes three years and i taught as i went and then like we fly examiners up and we mm. go through like exam process for like three years you do i think you do three exams a year that kind of thing 
Um, mm -hmm. So that's all here. But when it came to like my main love is contemporary, but I've mm -hmm. never actually taken a. But the cool thing with contemporary is this: there's no specific contemporary. It's not like tap or ballet where there's like you do this move into this move, and I could write it down, and someone who also does it could understand what I'm saying. Contemporary is mm -hmm. completely. Um, lyrical and what you feel like emotive you know what i mean so whatever i'm feeling on the day i can i can portray so mm -hmm. for me that's kind of where i've gone more towards in the hip-hop like no one can tell you no that's not a contemporary move or that's not mm -hmm. a hip-hop you know what i mean mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the, the movement as long as your body's moving then it's it's counted as dance you know so mm -hmm. for me that's where i've drifted towards because i never had the experience well initially of going out of the country and learning mm -hmm. so i had to like to contemporary the contemporary i do is completely different to the contemporary that someone else does in zim or the or anywhere in the world so i think mm. i created my own version of what i think contemporary dance is so, mm. so yeah that's dope um mm. and then it feels like there's been a lot of like you know those videos that they do where they'll have like a, a, a chris brown song and then how can i put it and there'll be two people i mean there'll be like a lot of people behind and there'll be two people who'll be going like a guy and a girl and they'll be dancing with like a gym in a studio and they and everyone's like cheering them on and like there'll be a lot of those videos happening online um i'm like man that's so dope but the question why i want to figure out is like when did you say like i think it'll be cool if we had our own studio like it'll be cool if we did our own thing you know that's never been so, done before yeah so i think for me growing up i i kind of always knew or i was guided into one day I would have a dance studio. So I think it's always been there at the back of my mind and I've always wanted to do it. I think at the time when I opened, I got pretty sick in 2012. Um, and then I think from there, like I wasn't- How did you, there. how were you, what, what, what did you get sick with? So I had, um, they thought I had like an autoimmune disease in a way. So mm. I basically got measles, mumps and German measles all within the space of one month. Mm. So I was really sick. I was like man down for three months. I was basically in a, like a dark room. And because of all of that and my low immunity and all of and that sort of thing, I got mm. a low grade encephalitis, which is more like brain swelling. Like so, in your brain. I, right. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't able to do a lot. I was very much on my back. And I think during that time I realized like, am I, am I happy with what I'm doing? Yes. I'm happy with teaching. Am I happy where I'm teaching? No. I was like, I think it's time. And I was 22 at the time. And I was like, I know that I'm made for greatness. And I know that I don't want to ever take on somebody else's dance studio. And then they're like, Oh, Michelle's only successful because she's, mm. I wanted to start from the beginning and I didn't want it to be under, let's say June Clutie dancing Academy. And then there's me. Mm. I wanted to be something mm. that like with dance avenue it's not michelle natable school of dancing i really wanted it to be about more about the dance aspect and more about the people rather than make it about me you know what i mean mm. I, I knew that building a brand was better to build a brand as a studio rather than build a brand as myself yep i think from that 2012 and i just met the guys and we had like started something out a bit of a fallout with a, a dance company that i was working for mm. um, looking for that i was dancing with should i say um and i was like you know what if we don't, if I don't do this, it's not going to happen. So we started mm. like from A Count Crew, we pulled in a whole group of people and we became A Count Dance Company. So we did all different genres. Mm. Um, and I was like, I think it's time that I opened into my own studio. So then I, I opened the studio and I opened with like ballet tap, modern acrobatics and hip hop. And I think we've probably, the, I would say they're one of the biggest multi-genre studios in the country. And so, yeah, it's been since then, it's been completely up. It's just gone from strength to strength to strength you said that's firstly congratulations um you, you, you said something earlier that um or two things i think sickness sometimes or like illness or near-death experiences are very like they're tough but they often can be like really great moments of like reflection and like man because it's like it's like a rock bottom moment you're like so how are we getting go up from here um you said you said i know that i'm built for greatness have you always felt that or where did that come from I think I've always felt it in my heart, but I've always known that no one can do it except me. So, mm. and I think the the part is, is I'm really, really hard on myself. I like, I'm such a perfectionist. I mean, some people will watch this and laugh because I'm on some ways, I'm absolutely the furthest thing from a perfectionist. <laughs> when it comes to like what I do, if I'm putting out a, a dance show, like, or if everyone and I work on something in the dance side, or if I'm working, let's say, with Alyssa and I working on a video for a corporate here, like, we're very, very much perfectionists. So I never mm. want anything to, to go wrong. So I'm not very good at dealing with when stuff goes pear-shaped, but 
I think when I say like I'm built for greatness is that I know that I know that I didn't get a head start on, in terms of education mm-hmm. in the career that I've taken. I'm completely self-taught in contemporary and completely self-taught in hip hop, which is the two strengths of our studio. Mm-hmm. But the same thing with the video side. I've never had anyone teach me a single thing about videoing or editing. Everything that I've done is I got the program and I would download TikToks and I'd slow them down to see how stuff would happen. And I, mm. so the I'm built for greatness is because, because everyone's like, it sounds so corny, but like, I felt like I had greatness within me. Like I've always had it inside. I just had to suck up the courage and just push myself to learn to do stuff because no one was going to save me. My parents couldn't afford to save me to university. Mm. I pay for that myself. I knew like, if you want to do this, Michelle, you're going to have to work it out yourself. So I feel like... Mm. A lot of people will see me and they'll be like, you got hands everything on a silver platter. Yes, in many ways I did. But on mm. and other ways in terms of my career, I, I absolutely didn't. I worked so hard and I self-taught in basically everything that I do. Mm. Mm. I love that. I asked that question because I think we all are. And I think it's mm. cool that you recognize that. Then you said, mm, well, Michelle, if it's going to be, it's up to me. Yeah. And you kind of like just, just went for it. Um, but of course, in going for greatness, it's never sunshine and daisies all the time. Um, uh-huh. When were some of the, bar, aside from COVID, when were some of the lowest points in terms of like in building the dance studio? What were some of the toughest moments in that? We'll get to the successes, but in building yeah. it, what were the toughest moments? Yeah. So I think the toughest part for me was actually breaking the news to my dance teacher that I wasn't going to continue mm. with her. That, that that I feel like that really ruined our relationship, which is is sad. Um, I know that she's proud of me. That I that I know. I know she's proud of me. Mm. But I I feel like it was taken as though I was stealing students for her and I was doing that sort of thing. And that was a really low part. And I think I still think that like through through like that time when I was sick, I still feel like a lot of that was because I was so stressed about this process. I don't deal well with stress at all. Mm. <laughs> so, I feel like a lot of that was because I was having these things like should I start a studio like how do I tell her I don't like hurting people's feelings and I don't like Mm. people thinking bad of me like those are one of my biggest fears as people not liking me not not in that kind of way not in such a way but Mm -hmm. I don't like disappointing people and I don't like Mm. people thinking that I've done them wrong that really I struggle with that a lot so I think Mm. the low support for my studio was literally the start which is weird for me because it was, it's only been amazing, only been successful, but like mm. it was really tough for me to, I mean, I think I went to about 15 coffees with her, like with my mom, like you're going to tell her today and then I'll just change the subject. And wow. then she's, like, oh, she's so nice, just going to coffee with me. And the one day my mom literally kicked me under the table and she's like, June, Michelle has something to tell you. And I was like, oh, my God. <gasps> like, my mom oh, literally man. threw me under the bus. Thank God. Like, otherwise, I don't know how, to, how I would ever have told it. <laughs> so that was pretty, pretty annoying. And then I think another one of the lows is COVID. COVID, we, we struggled. It was tough. Mm. You know, like, mm. we, we, we can't say that a dance studio is like a school or a dance studio is like a business. As I mean, of course, it's a business and it's, it's a, a school. Mm. And right. Mm. Um, we get paid, like, per term. So... It's not, a, it's not a huge salary. I don't, I don't, I don't mm. make something that I'm going to be able to save from. You know what I mean? There's mm. still there's still all of that stuff. So mm. during COVID, when we were shut down, in the beginning, we we're like, no, let's do what's right, let's close. Um, but from then we try to do the online stuff. Like I looked up so many kids' nostrils and Wi-Fi. It and this was <laughs> this like this like so this I'm like five, six, yeah, seven, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's when I'm yeah. on seven, this one's when I'm on three. And I'm like, I don't think I can do this. And it's not like, working. It's not working. And it was heartbreaking for me because before I came to the video side, like that's all I knew. I was literally mm. a Michelle dancer. I knew nothing else. I had no faith in myself to do anything else up until that mm. time. Like, what I did. But that's kind of all I had. So I think that for me was that start of COVID up until let's say June and, and that, like in terms of the studio, it was really tough. Like, it was hard to process that you can't do what you want to do, you know? Mm, I think that's, yeah. First, on the first point, yeah, it's, it's tough when you had to kind of break up. But at, at any point, someone, you have to branch out and kind of do your own thing if you feel that's in your spirit to do it. Yeah. And I think it's also, we need to kind of get to a point where, where, we, where we have the mentality of abundance, where we feel like there's space for me with my thing 
but Michelle can also have her own thing and we can support each other. And like, I think abund I think if I'm scarcity and versus abundance is like the one thing I think. So it's great that you guys are both coexisting, I believe today, and you're still both doing your own thing and there's enough for everybody. And everyone yeah. can win, you know what I mean? Um, and then with regards to, you said something around COVID that you thought, oh man, I'm Michelle the dancer. I thought this is all I could do. What, what gave you, I guess, was the desperation that gave you the courage to, to look within yourself to be like, now surely you could, I, I believe we can do many things, not just one. Yeah. I believe no, we can do many absolutely. things. You know so I, mean? I, was, I was lucky enough that um, during COVID, my fiance and I actually got locked down together. Our relationship was very fresh. She got <laughs> very fresh. Like I'm talking like a month and a half fresh. Yeah, yeah. She got to Zim and then um, we, we got locked down. And then the lockdown, we're like, no, man, it's fine. It'll just be two weeks. It's all good. Well, mm -hmm. it was somewhat, it was like the end of April. She only went, left in August. So <laughs> I think, yeah. So I, she was a lot of a driving force behind me. And she still is today. Like mm. she, I don't give her enough credit. I'll admit that. And she mm. always tells me about something like that. And I don't <laughs> She's, she, she has been a huge strength behind me and like said, you're not just Michelle the dance. There's so much within you. So mm. I think. I'm not going to lie. She was probably one of the biggest things to keep me grounded, I guess, during mm. that time. And she's an athlete as well. So she was taken out of her mm. comfort zone. She's here with me. We're both stuck. We both have to make a plan what to do and all mm. of that. So, so it was a tough time for both of us. But I think we, we came out winning in the end, which was which is amazing. And I, I don't think, like mm. I said, people can say that, you know. So I'm, I'm mm. really true sometimes you need someone who's outside of yourself because you're too you know I mean you don't know what she, sometimes you don't know what your gifts are you need someone to tell you like no you're you can do this thing you know um so thankful that she was able to kind of fan yeah. your flame um yeah and that's when the whole jerusalem thing just after she left that was when like the jerusalem took off you know so that was perfect for me because not and it only just kind of like, mm, like michelle and Airborne are going to dance avenue to go and do the teaching of the jerusalem but then our company that we started listen and i during COVID, which is OSNAP Media, that was able to go and film all of that. You know what I mean? So I was able, it was like a miracle mm. for me at the time. Like my two passions like married in one massive event just after the most devastating time in all of our lives, you know, with COVID and stuff. So I, mm. I always feel like I have this like guardian angel that looks after me. When Michelle doesn't have a plan, like a plan just pops up. And I, it's and you crazy. Say, Thank you. It's, That's... Yeah. And I'm like grabbing my <laughs> So I like, don't want to do it. But yeah, so I was it's just being blessings after blessings for me. I can't even sit and complain about anything, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I'm going to touch on two different things. I'm going to first come, I'm going to come back to Alyssa, but I want to, I want to come back, but I want to touch on the studio itself. Um, what has yeah. been the biggest surprise in terms of the impact that it's had on you people that looked like you or anyone that's from our community? You know, people that, because when you said grew up, you said there was no one that looked like you that was dancing hip hop and, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's, it's so what's crazy. the biggest surprise it's had? Yeah. yeah, so I don't think it's because of me that it started. Do you know what I mean? I was just right, maybe number right. one. I, I, I'm not going to sit here. <laughs> of course, know. I was, All yes, we aren't saying she is the, she's the, no, exactly. Right. Not that, but it's just become normal. It's just become like, there are mm. some girls in our studio that I would, I don't even want to dance next to because they're so freaking incredible. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they are world class and they're like 15 years old. And I'm like, Lord, don't put me. <laughs> 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 you know what I, mean? so, <laughs> I guess like, um, I kind of just did what I did. And I think people were like, well, if Michelle can do it, I can do it. I guess, you know what I mean? And everyone found their stuff. And so, mm. and then I work with everyone. So the two of us, <clears throat> we just, Push and we just do what we do and if people join us wonderful if they didn't that was also fine you know but then mm. when the studio opened and with obviously it was like the new place to be you know people mm. in Zim they love mm. Mm. the new new we now the new yeah. what's the new <laughs> yeah new, new, new restaurant new <laughs> restaurant <laughs> so at that stage like eight years yeah. ago dance me was that so we had well my friends going so I should go and then I tell three of my friends you know what I mean so it was kind of as mm. we were studio, word of we mouth just, started with people which was not an expectation at all but it actually what was became our reality and it was yeah it was lucky it never had this weird phase like it was like one girl that came one. And, and that, mm. it was like open the studio look oh, so, yeah. just like because there's exactly. nothing like it that I, I can imagine that nothing like because i saw it and i remember being like god of course i know airborne i remember yeah. seeing like the content on it, i said whoa because mm -hmm. I love hip hop a lot, but there was never, I think Zim is like very big for 
dancehall. You know what I mean? Like dancehall yeah. or like dancehall. I would say dancehall. Maybe it's, maybe now, but dancehall I would say has always been one of our biggest. Yeah. It's huge. It's so big in Zimbabwe. It's insane. Yeah. Um, so hip hop, you never had like hip hop studio or contemporary dance studios that incorporated that into it. So, so you know, you guys did great. Um, yeah. So congratulations yeah. for that. Thank you. With, the, with regards to your your fiance, how did you guys meet? The reason I'm, and I'm the reason I'm talking, I want to touch on that is because of like, uh, I think sometimes the moments we can be a bit like intolerant sometimes. So yeah. I want to speak about like you know how you guys met. <laughs> Um, and you know how that came about. <laughs> so it's it's a uh, I don't know if how, how in depth I should go. So she messaged. Well, you don't have to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So sure. she that, that's where she has started. Um, I can tell you it's a bit spicy, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, in 2019, I was dating another girl who was from Cape Town, and Alyssa mm. was seeing someone from Cape Town. Mm-hmm. Turns out that. The girl Alyssa was seeing was receiving messages from my girlfriend at the time, so my ex girlfriend. So Spicy. she was messaging her. So then Alyssa was like, "Okay, well if that's going to happen, then whatever, I'm going to message Michelle." And mm-hmm. then that, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And um, and then how did you guys do like long distance? Like she was in Cape Town. Still mm-hmm. doing long distance. Now nah, we've, we've all been there, girl. Um, we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so she, I went there, we like spoke, so she thought I was from Cape Town. She was like, can we mm. meet for work this weekend? I'm like, funny story. I'm not Cape Town. <laughs> I'm actually in Zim and I think she was like, rolled her eyes, probably ghosted me. Like, 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 like oh, that's yeah, so right, funny. right, right, right. And then we spoke and we, um, I eventually went to, just went to Joburg to go and meet this person that I was speaking to. Um, mm-hmm. she, she didn't trust that I was real. So she was like, you know, when you walk into OR town. She just wanted to like, and to, to look from a, a different <laughs> angle. A hundred percent. She was like on the third floor looking down that I'm actually who I say I was. So, I mean, I'm like, that's so awful. I was going to come all the way. And you're like, oh God. And you just get in your car and leave and block me. And then I'm stuck in Joe. I'm like, what were you thinking? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so that was, so then she came. I went, I went there for like a week. Then there was like two weeks after that. Mm-hmm. And then. He came to Zim and then we got locked down together. So that's, Whoa. And then that you know, was like a... <coughs> wow, that's so insane. And you guys got like, and then that of course, but it's good, it's a good tester, like to kind of establish whether, you know, is this the thing? Was this the... Make or break, but it was really hard because if we had broken, I don't know where she would have gone because she was stuck. <laughs> can go to the next room. Um, so it's of... like, like you can go but you can try <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't um, know anyone in Zim, like, at the time she'd never been to them she'd run here like in 2008 or whatever but but like, that was that's it that was it and she like I mean, of course she was stuck indoors for the most but was she happy to be there you know it was a big change of lifestyle for her as anyone who comes to Zim can imagine you know mm-hmm. what I mean mm-hmm. she was used I mean, she was like Mrs. Almond Milk and she, her coffee girl and there's no... Yeah, room. and she's in Cape Almond Town and there's the beach so and Almond there's the whole girl. thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it was, there was a lot of, a learning curve for her, but for the mm. better, like in the end, I think it was really tough coming from like living big in Joburg to living very small in Zim. You know how we are here. We don't have any lavish things. There's no fancy things or anything like that. We're very simple, simple people. It's simple. So mm-hmm. it's a bit of a cultural shock, should I say, is probably a better word for her. But... Mm. She she loves them. She absolutely loves them, which mm. has been been really. Cool. Our people our people are golden. You know, they're golden. Um, yeah. But qu- typically, LGBTQ communities are often like at least historically in Zimbabwe have been very. There's a lot of intolerance around them. Have you found that that's been a struggle? Or has that been pretty in 2022? It's been much better. 2022, actually, mm. our relationship or whatever since we kind of came out. Mm-hmm. Um, We've been blessed. I mm. think I think it's sad because, you know, like I feel like there's quite a lot of these big pages on in Zim. I don't want to like name them, but like mm-hmm, kind mm-hmm. of I don't know if you know there was that whole so easy thing that happened where he came and then all the churches said, Oh no, he can't come, he's gonna really? be gay. <sighs> so during that time, I was kind of thrown under the bus and like my heart I would see like on a very big page, mm. Zim page that's got like half a million followers or something, and then they would put me there. But they would put me there not to put me on a pedestal, 
but put me there waiting for a reaction because the Samisi thing happened the day before. So they're obviously mm. wanting to get like a bit of spice. Like, some, uh, like, a, like a clickbait, and clickbait, basically. Clickbait. So then I was really nervous about that. And I would like, I'd stop myself from looking at the comments. I'm like, don't look at the comments. Like, it's not who you are or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, let me just go and look. And I was so, so surprised that for every terrible comment, there was probably like 10 to 15 comments shutting that person down. You know, mm, so mm. it's definitely changed. I just, I, I hope that, how do I say this not in, in a, in a, in a better way? Like, mm. I hope that if, it, if I were black, that I would get the same love. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I hope that if I was a black male in Zim, that mm. from the Zimbabwean community, I pray that I would get the same because mm. I don't know, <clears throat> I don't know if I would. I don't know mm. if the fact that I'm has made it easier for people to be like, oh, it's fine. You know mm, what I mean? Mm. Culturally, we're slightly different. You know, even mm -hmm. if we sit in so many ways, mm -hmm. they. Um, I feel like, do you know? I don't know if you know. If yeah, you no, know no, no, no. Exactly, exactly. Yes, exactly. exactly. Like, that makes me sad because I get in my DMs. I promise you, I get maybe. I mean, up to like, and some days I've had up to five messages a day. Now, obviously, like maybe mm. four five a month or whatever but mm. people saying to me, i'm so jealous of you being out i'm so terrified mm. what should i do? and i'm i i can't say what you should what do. you like, should do I yeah have responsibility on me because i'm like oh stuff everybody just come out it's all going to be fine because mm. you know what because it won't not, because it won't for everyone mm. i can't speak like i can't say oh my dad reacted this way and your dad mm. will react the same because mm. we're culturally our parents are very different so mm -hmm. i can't say to you do this do this do this because I come from a very different background. Mm, yeah, I yeah fully. I think I I believe in like tolerance, tolerance of every. You know what I mean? Like just not even tolerance, just Lord love and tolerance. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. if I'm if I'm if I'm a person that is loving and tolerant, I should not impose my beliefs on you. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So like that, that's really saying like if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Like, don't so not, yeah. I'm mm. not for my sexuality on anyone i would never ever do that i don't see mm -hmm. myself as that person mm -hmm. i'm just not gonna lie to about to myself who i am if you don't like who i am i'm not forcing you to like me no one forced you to feel, exactly yeah i don't yeah. feel like you should have the right to to say such awful and i've i've had the worst dms let me tell you mm -hmm. i'm gonna mm -hmm. that they're like i've had some diabolical messages but mm -hmm. in the end i'm like you took so much time out of your day to worry about what I'm doing. <laughs> what I'm doing? I didn't do anything to you. Yeah. Your time. And I, I'm not even going to take the time to like double tap and like mm. your message. Like, I'm like, mm. whatever. I, I don't even block people. Like, what's the point? It's like, mm. why must I waste my energy to go and find where to block them? And if you're going to send that to me, I'm going to read the first two lines and be like, oh God, here's another one. And I'm going to move on and I'm going to keep being Michelle and I'm going to keep doing my thing. And you've just wasted, you've probably thought about me the whole day. Mm. Like, mm. I mean, any publicity for me, bad or good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I spoke. I, I, I spoke about it because I just think love and tolerance is like the key. Like we can't <laughs> impose. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, so, so you know, so kudos to you for like living your, your truth. I, I can live my truth, and whatever you know what I mean. Um, that looks like for you is what's most important. Um, but to kind of bring us full circle. Um, yeah. I wanted to figure, I wanted to ask, I always ask a question at the end, which is like, in speaking to like the future, or two questions, I always speak to like, the first question is like, to the future, what are you guys, what are you working on and how can people help? Um, whatever it is that you're working on. That's the first question I'll, I'll ask. So in terms of, I can break it up, I guess, in terms mm -hmm. of, in terms of videography, in terms of my life, I can maybe break mm -hmm. it up like that. <laughs> video, we've got a, a show coming up at the end of, at the end of July, beginning of August. So that's always exciting for us. We haven't done a show since, like a proper show show since mm -hmm. the beginning of 2019. So it's like- Huge, yeah. Huge. And I feel like mm. we've forgotten how to put a show together, but we've got a really big show <laughs> coming at the end of the term. So that's what we're aiming for with the studio. In terms of videography, I've got an exciting um, collaboration, I guess you could call it, a um, partnership that's mm -hmm. coming out today. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that all goes just, nice. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll keep that one. Yes, yeah, keep the good vibes, the good vibes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I've got that one that's coming up. And then in terms of my life, obviously, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a really big struggle working between two countries. So for me, the next step is just learning. I want to be married. I want to have a family. I want to live in my own home. So it's mm. now to 
how to balance my whole life while living the life that I want. You know what I mean? Like mm. everyone, everyone wants to go home to their family. Everybody wants to go home to their kids. Everyone wants to go mm. home. Like this is one thing, but it's mm. not what is the most important thing. So I'm really mm. working hard on having the life that I'm that I've always dreamed of. And it's I feel like it's in it's just in it's my you're almost you're almost there. I'm, I'm about to reel it in. It's coming. Just, I can feel it. It's coming. It'll come. <laughs> It will come. So we'll, we'll keep we'll keep posting on everything. Of course, the show. Of course, people will come. But then we'll keep our eyes open for whatever it is to that is going to be in your you know in your yeah. radar in our radar. Um, and then I, I like to look at like the Zimbabwean Zimbabwe is like a, it's a story that we're all writing. It has been and it didn't just start in 1980. It began before then. 19, and, and it continues to keep, keep being written by people like you and I each and every day. What does shifting the Zimbabwean story for the better look like for for you it's a tough one because obviously like i said for me family and stuff is really important and i just mm. feel like at the end of the day in terms of the relationship and my sexual orientation and mm. who I choose to love zim is a really tough place for me to have that and mm. as much as i've lived through it as a tough stage i know that i want to have children and mm. <clears throat> i could be a martyr and i could put them through that but i just don't think it's mm. fair to mm. do that children before they have a choice of that do you know what i mean like i don't want my kids to feel like they get bullied because they have in a war zone well, first of all like mm. racial parents and for, and then second of all having two moms you know what i mean like i just don't mm. them's not there yet i do feel like we're on a very fast train going forward on both of those aspects and that for me mm. is incredible mm. but i just don't want my kids to to um to have to live that because of me, do you know what I mean? And me trying to act all good or us trying to say mm. like, oh, we're a um, same sex relationship. Um, here are my kids, go to a school, mm. go to do all that. Mm. I don't want my kids to go to that. I want my kids to grow up in a normal life. We're having two mm. moms as normal and there's probably three or four other kids in the class that have the same thing, you know? Mm. So as much as I can see them going in that, in that direction, I don't think it's gonna be within let's say the next 10 years, you know what I mean? Where I would be comfortable putting my kids into that situation where someone's parents might come in and be like, I don't want my kid to be in the class with that kid or no, you can't be friends with this little one because, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't mm. want my kid to suffer because of my decisions. <clears throat> mm. Mm. That's so, honest. Th thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and and it's, I, a I, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge topic on both biracial and also of course, you know, having same-sex couples. It's, it's, it's bizarre to me because I've never, I've never been faced with it. Like, especially the interracial relationship, like that doesn't even come up at all. Like, mm, it is mm -hmm. what it is. Like, for me, I don't even see a difference, so it's hard mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. that people do. Like, it's just, it's mm. very strange to me. Mm. Um, but I guess in the same-sex relationship, that's what I, I see a lot more of, and I see. I mean, when I first came out, I was terrified of my studio. Like, I was like, no one's gonna come back. Every, this is going to happen because now they're going to be like, oh, but you, you teach little girls. I was like, what are people going to think? And you mm, know what I mean? Like, it was mm. absolutely, and I can tell you for free, like I didn't lose one student. I had the most incredible messages from some of the parents that I taught their kids for so long. They were sending me like flowers. They were writing me letters, like, we're so proud of you. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's, it's been so many positives. Um, so I'm going to always like, I'll absolutely hold on to that. But yeah, like the kid thing and stuff, it's, it's really, it's very touchy for me. Mm. Kind of like allowing me to we to we to work towards creating a space where you can allow people to be themselves, whatever that looks yeah. like, and kind that of. and that it's okay for them to be themselves without being persecuted for it. You know, I don't, I don't want to be a martyr. I don't want to waste my life just to be written in the books like oh Michelle Natwa was the first like openly lesbian person. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, no, I'm not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah got yeah, you. Like, mm -hmm. I'm already thrown under the bus for so many reasons and the being mm -hmm. gay thing and mm -hmm. like. So like with Alyssa and I, she, we both know the sensitivity in Zim. So we do have like a, she, I have an Instagram page. She has an Instagram page. We do post each other, but things that are a little bit more um, open, we post on our other page. So like um, Zim, like big celebrity pages, let's say, will like mm. take those off there, which is, it's not private because I'm, I don't want it to be yeah, private. Yeah, you're putting it out there, right. Mm -hmm. But they'll take that and post it on. I'm like, why? You like, you don't even ask me, do you mind if I post this? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm tired of people using my life and it doesn't happen often but when it does happen it like hurts that using my life like you said earlier like as clickbait just to get mm. the likes and because it does it does affect me not as much as it used to but like i just don't know why people like i said people take so much time out of their day to do stuff it blows my mind mm. 
well, hopefully this will be, you know, give someone the courage to, or at least it'll, it's a drop in the ocean and hope it'll ripple. And then Absolutely. maybe give someone the courage, not just now, but in the future to live their truth, whatever that looks like, whether it's dancing, hip hop or relationships yeah. with the interracial or say whatever, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so thanks for, you know, taking the time to chat with me and um, so all the best with, with their really. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And you keep right. well and keep strong and I'm sure we'll chat soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Michelle. Taking 
taking a stroll, me holding your hand, we having a chat. I'm hoping that we go out again. You seem surprised. I can see by the look in your eyes. I said, let's talk about it. You say you have to decide. You've been through many men, some of them you'd rather forget. Conscious bottles of love, they left you rather upset. And now you're crying. I never made to see you shed a tear. I was far around, it's funny, notice that I care when I'm willing to be there. What to do? Give you my all, what to do? Catch you when you fall. Girl, I love you, you're my African queen. The only one I see in my sweet African dreams. Every morning, every morning, every morning, every morning, my back with a Ooh, Pandino Muka Ooh, yeah, Exceni